Okay, great question. Does all sickness uh, come from disconnection to God or from the mind or whatever? Um, if I can just quickly share, um, well, let me let me let me phrase because it's Course in Miracles. Let, lesson fourteen of a Course in Miracles states that uh, some. Uh, I'll paraphrase it unless someone uh, has sort of memorized it photographically. Uh, lesson fourteen. So some of the things that are are, in, in, are perceived are one's own personal projections, and some of the things that are perceived in this illusory world are what we call collective projections or collective illusions. So like my personal illusion or projection might be donuts. If there's donuts in the room, it's hell. But there might be collective uh, illusions or projections that are within the world of illusion with all the collective egos are, are agreeing on certain projections. Like for example, uh, like not having money is, is not good. And there can be also illnesses. We're talking about sickness, actually sickness and physical health was one of my big things. But mental health, it'd be the same thing. I mean, we could, like, we could all, I mean, there are collective belief systems in what is kidney failure and what it should look like. There's collective belief systems about schizophrenia and what, what that should look like. So th these are what I call belief systems, you know. Uh, there's a set of beliefs around how like the beliefs, you know, I had kidney failure, and I call, I call that an illusory belief system. And the Course in Miracles would say that's just a you know magical idea or something like that. So as soon as you believe in, if you pick up the belief from the collective kidney failure, it's like got all it's got the all subset of belief systems and what you should do if you've got this belief in kidney failure. Like, oh, your kidneys stop working. Um, you know, there's blood in the urine. Uh, there's protein in the urine. Eventually, over a period of time, we'll probably end up on a diocese machine. I shouldn't talk too much about it because it might, but uh, you know, you have all of these beliefs and you have to believe that and the doctors reinforce that. Like, oh, if you've got this, blah, 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 and within three months it's blah, 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 and then, you know, and then six months it's blah. They go, oh, that's what I have to do. Okay, that's how the belief system is going. So you just, you pick up these beliefs. And I, I like what Carl Jung talked about, it's like the collective, you just, pick this data thing program and now without knowing it you can like create and in the in the world of duality you can just create that thing of kidney failure because you just picked it up the same thing would be like with uh, I don't know uh, mental illness labels they put well for that label you should be you should be displaying these characteristics and these characteristics and then we have you fit into this specific label and this label is a, a set of belief systems. But in, in terms of the course, that would all be an illusion. So these are part of either one's individual individual belief systems, which might be a bit more unique, or these might be part of collective belief systems, which a lot of people are agreeing on. So, um, so yes, so everything, because um, everything, when you're in, if you're feeling separation in this moment, and your sense of self is being tormented, by, okay, I've got this label of physical illness, I've got this label of a mental illness, I've got this, I've got this belief system of financial situation, I've got this belief system around my relationship situation, whatever it is, then these are, these are all, I'm going to use, I mean, you know, I have to use words, and I'm not trying to create, um, you know, I, you could say on some level these are forms of sickness. You know, these are all forms of, uh, or uh, less, uh, less, um, charged word would be separation. These would be your f forms of sickness. I mean, um, uh, someone was using the word oneness. I forgot to talk about oneness. But, you know, when, when there's the absence of a separation of me or you, but, you know, it can only be the sense of a separated self that can have kidney failure, that can have a, a diagnosis of, Alz I, I don't know, I was talking about my father, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia. So those things... Um, so, um, so those things are, are yeah, sicknesses. As, you know, my own experience was, like, as I did, you know, as um, Dr. Hawkins said, like, if, if he, he gave this thing, but it's lesson 14, and I teach it here. God did not, it says it, God did not create cancer, it's not real. Or, or as Hawkins said, I cancel my belief in cancer, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. So God did not create, in, in the infinite realm, 
these things in the world of separation are not real. So you can just keep saying that God did not create, it's not real. God did not create, you know, of course also says, I'm not my body, I'm free, for I am as God created it. So just forget your body, forget the identification, all my thoughts are meaningless, forget all your thoughts. So in that way you're deleting, you, I mean, this is controversial, isn't it? Like, my body is a sickness. My, 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 my thoughts, well, let's call this personal. A personal relationship with the body is a sickness. And a, a personal relationship with a me, these thoughts of mine is also a sickness. So they create the, the sense of separation. So, so I would say, if, you took, if you're using the frame of enlightenment, or the timeless now, or, or the oneness, these are all words, but from that level, you could say any, all, everything is a sickness. You know, to have the thought that there is a me is a sickness. To have the thought that there's a me with cancer is even more sick. To have the, the idea that there's a me in relationship to you is a sickness. To have the relationship that there's a me that can have a mental diagnosis of, I don't know, schizophrenia, uh, I don't know, narcissism, uh, whatever disorders there are. So these are all, I'd say, sicknesses or parts of the collective hell or parts of my individual sicknesses that I'm holding consciously, because none of that is real. That has to be part of my individual experience of separation or the collective. Our shared, you know, some of us all agree to collective shared illusions. Like, uh, you would, I could say from the course that if I'm saying I'm a body and my thoughts, I'm agreeing to part of the collective sickness. That, you know, because the course is telling me I'm not a body, I'm free. For I'm as God created me. The course is telling me all my thoughts are meaningless. So if I, all my thoughts are meaningless, then I wouldn't be experiencing thoughts now, at least not on a personal level. It might be witnessed to pass by. But just like there might be witnessing of a mug, there's no confusion the mug on the table is me. So even if the thoughts just skimming past, there's no, there's no confusion that those thoughts belong to a separated sense of uh, self. And even if there's a bodies in the room being witnessed, those bodies have got nothing to do with what I am. I'm the witnesser of those bodies. Uh, so there is not a separation of a me and a you. So, and I actually do subscribe to that. I mean, I'm not asking anyone to, but, you know, if there's any sense of a me having a sickness, or even a me, I would say from a point of view of enlightenment, that is sickness. Because, you know, the timeless now, the limitless now, cannot be, um, for me, from that level, anything that goes into uh, uh, any form of separation or duality is sickness compared to that. But also from the other frame, like if you've been like a donut addict and really in your body and you stop donuts, that is making progress into in the right direction. And if you're like now just angry all the time and you're now not angry, that's still progress. It depends from what frame you're, you're speaking. So you, you could say from get, you're getting less and less sick if you're using the absolute, the timeless then we're letting go of layers of sickness or layers of identification in, in the world of separation. Um, so I, I would say like the enlightened teachers have tr transcended the illusion of, of separation. And so the, they, they no longer have the confusion, that, you know, like I'm a body or I'm my thoughts. That is what, that is my essence, that this is, you know, that uh, this is a me. Yeah. So, so there's some... We're on camera as well. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'm, I have no shame. Um, <laughs> there, there, it's one of the strange... One of the things I was reflecting on what you were saying is like, if the entire world, if every human inhabitant of this planet was to decide that we are no longer going to identify with the, the body, the mind, the self, whatever, it's like the whole world would dissolve yeah. and go, which is quite interesting in the way that we could therefore say that we have chosen to limit our experience to the body in order to create the world that we're creating and for whatever reason we may have had yeah. god only knows yeah. um but then what is also quite interesting and, and i was talking specifically or more about conditions of the mind mm -hmm. that when you take say somebody who may as a wild example somebody who may have an autism diagnosis and you find the way they function in the world is very that they very often they're very intelligent skilled multi-talented people but then they also but because of that the payoff seems to be the way they function in the world mm -hmm. and in what they're doing in their in their um single-mindedness they're very very present in their own world but they won't play anybody else's game 
but um, for not playing that game, society says, no, these people are misfits, they're outcasts, they're sick. In their world, they're, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, and so, and then you can look at things like, I was reading about the diagnostic criteria of, of personality disorders. And one of the things that I found quite interesting was that the way they determine a diagnosis in people isn't, is, is partially how they get on with the culture that they're living in. And so a Westerner getting a diagnosis may be completely different to somebody from, say, Asia or Africa getting a diagnosis because their cultural expectations are mm. different. So again, it seems to be this human-made way of pathologising mm. not conforming to a collective ideal. And, and, and so therefore, maybe even to the point of being less separate because they're not living in that restrictive capacity of the linear expectations that we have put on I don't know if I've overcomplicated that. No, no, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, especially societies which are very much in the head mm. and putting a label onto everything. I mean, I, I think like probably like, you know, probably in highly Buddhist cultures where you just let go and, you know, and just be in the now and, and not, but in cultures where there's, they categorize everything yeah. and to, to an endless thing and, and try and put everything into little boxes. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. It, it feels like there's a historical thing where in the past people looked more at the actual behavior of people and nowadays they like to actually group people and put an identity on that on that behavior rather than just look at the behavior itself and that's in some ways is considered advanced but what, what I find quite also quite interesting and I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent is listening to Hawkins speaking about the calibrations of different people over the years and he calibrated Freud at 499 and he calibrated Jung at 540, which is, I think, about 520. 520. Okay, it was very close to that of the big book, which is when we start getting into unconditional love. Mm. Um, because I think because Jung was very aware of the potential of the spiritual experience in terms That's of right. resolving mm. um, the, torment, the state of the tormented mind. So, yeah, I do find it very interesting without wanting to disempower anybody who's in that position of thinking, I'm a misfit, I don't fit in and I can't cope with the world and, it's all gonna go, and, I, and I'm going to go and hide and live in a cave. It's too much for me, you know. It's a real experience for people who are undergoing it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there is a, there is a danger uh, with societies that give very strong labels to people. And, uh, you know, like I said, with the medical profession, you know, as soon as they say, you know, all, all of this has great power. Um, and Hawkins gave a great thing. It's like... If you suddenly sort of said in the newspaper there's a new epidemic of pig flu or whatever it is <laughs> and people grow snouts or whatever <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and you had every single newspaper and scientists on TV saying this is what we've got, we've got pig flu, you start like making noises like a pig. <laughs> within, within, no, this is true, I mean within a period of time there would be cases of pig flu coming up, and, yeah, and people would actually start to. It's a joke, but anyway, it's not a joke. That actually is true. I mean, if you start having a new thing and you label it and you say these are the symptoms and you put it out onto loads and loads of newspapers and you ask all the doctors to look for these symptoms, then after a period of time, that that you know that thing that that, that is a great power. Okay, thank you, thank you. Probably uh, four thirteen is a big group, so. Um, and, and it's also